This group of Year 8 girls from Witten Park High in Blackburn are looking at gender stereotypes in STEM-related careers. Yeah, girls is cleaning, plumbing is boys. Very yeah. So it's cleaning. Through the use of team-building exercises and an engineering workshop at a local training company, the school is trying to encourage a greater diversity of students to consider STEM careers. I, as I say, have an engineering background and I know how valuable that's been and some of the opportunities given me. So something I'm very aware of is that a lot of girls do not go into engineering and science-based and maths-based jobs. And I think it's important that we open up those opportunities and let them see what's available. Training 2000's schools coordinator, Cara Robb, has been running this girls-only workshop for the last few years. OK, girls, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to read your list back to me. So can we start with this? Cara starts the session by getting the girls to list the type of jobs they think women traditionally do. We've got dinner ladies, hairdressers, midwives, nurses. The girls tend to have quite low aspirations, whereas the boys are unbelievable. They, they were, I think, like £100,000 and the girls were writing £5,000 for a salary. In the UK, women earn on average 17% less than men, even though they are outperforming them at GCSE and A-level. So Cara has selected some high-paid STEM-related jobs for the girls to consider. Have we, as females in this room, got the skills or potentially got the skills and qualities that are needed to be able to do some of these jobs? I think a girl wouldn't go into um, the, these type of jobs because they don't think that they're able to, like, the classed as male jobs, like not female jobs. Think about when you were little children, when you were little girls, maybe maybe when you were at nursery. Can you remember what sort of games and toys that you were, you were given to play with? Dollies and prams and things. Dollies and prams and things. <laughs> From a very early age, we stereotype boys and girls in the types of toys that we give them. So as you've just rightly said, we give girls things like dolls and prams and Wendy houses. And with boys, we give them things like building sets and tool sets and we get them to make things and do practical type jobs. Most girls were at end on the same things like hairdressers and nail technicians and everything. But then when um, Cara started to talk to us, we started to think of when we needed to use maths and science. We, used, we thought like of meteorologists and um, scientists and everything like that. Because STEM subjects can be so hands-on, Cara's keen to get the girls building. So next on the agenda, they have to use a construction kit to assemble a car and a bridge. Whilst you're doing this activity, I want you to think about the types of skills that you're using. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five of you working on the car, and then the other five working on the bridge. Is that OK? The school is trying to provide STEM programmes that are accessible to all. In this day and age, there shouldn't be any boundaries for any females, uh, let alone any Asian females. I know how difficult it has been for me, but I do want to encourage all the youngsters who I work with to follow their goal. <laughs> First we're going to make the wheels and then we're going to build it up to the actual, like, what's it called? The frame of the car. Well, my, my dad bought my brother um, this kind of car kind of set with electronics in it. And yes, he's got two sisters, more me, and I've got a sister Why? older than me. Yeah, and um, we I technically mean, help him what? build stuff. Yeah. No, I don't really know. When like, you're in a mixed group, it's normally the girls just stand at a side and the boys do it all. In this, there's no, like, like the, the boys don't go off and do it because everyone's the same, so all the ju girls just get together and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think they still find it difficult to let go of the idea that, that they're not as good at, at maths or they're not as good at science and they're not as good at making things or practical things, even when you've clearly shown them that they can be just as good. So what I'd like you to do now, I'd like you to tell me which skills do you think you used? Start with... Communication you? skills. Communication skills, well done. Pro problem solving. Listening. Patience. Organising. 
organising, yeah? And you don't actually realise that you're using those skills, do you? You just do it automatically. Now the students are warmed up, it's time to get the overalls on and their hands dirty. Right on now. Downstairs in the workshop, engineer Dave Bolton is taking them through a clock building session. In an all girls group, it's quite evident that they do come across as comfortable and will all participate at an equal level. To give Dave a hand are three of his mechanical engineering apprentices. Leah, Emily and Lauren are here for you girls to ask any questions you need, any help you need with your work as we go through it. These are girls out of our first year apprenticeship school. It is really important for the youngsters to see uh, positive role models. Once they got there, they were made to feel at ease once they saw the female apprentices. It brought down some more barriers for them. They will be the first girls at that company when they go from here as first year apprentices. Girls, would you like to uh, spread yourselves out and make sure that we mark this out correctly, please? Usually engineering just for boys, so if you bring girls in then they can see what actually happens. Make their own mind up instead of being told what to do. Loads of people have asked me why I didn't do a hairdressing apprenticeship than engineering. So what I need you to do now with your rule is mark 30 millimetres. The school's liaison team wanted something exciting, um, something to grasp um, the children's imagination as we are trying to get women into, into engineering. We came up with the clock idea, it seems to have gone very, very well. Um, the clock has progressed uh, into uh, two materials. Um, we also tried to incorporate the maths and quite a number of, of different activities within the engineering field. With the scribe, please. Then make a mark all the way across. Very, very sharp blade, okay? Quite easy to cut the plastic with, and they're quite easy to cut your fingers with. You're going to chase the circle all the way around your template. Look at the centre of the centre punch. Look at the top of it. You won't hit your fingers then. And it is literally, because it's plastic, Very, very gently round the outside of your circle, I'd like you to just smooth the edges off. Then, to go around your aluminium, all the way around it. Clock mechanism is place that through from the back of your clock. Really good job, fantastic. Take your clocks with you. I like everything because it's really fun and like we haven't done anything like it before. I think at first they were a bit wary, but I think overall the feeling I got uh, was they really did enjoy it and they felt quite inspired. And it's made them think about the value of doing maths and science and what they can do with it and how much money they can earn in some of these other jobs, uh, which are quite exciting, some of them. I mean, meteorologists and people doing things which use science, use maths, use engineering. Down the road at Pletgate High School, they're trying a different approach to get both girls and boys interested in STEM careers. In a mobile laboratory provided by the Institute of Physics, a team of volunteer scientists are taking small groups of Key Stage 3 students through some exciting experiments. The experiments look at familiar concepts, such as the environment and the sun, which are accessible to all. The reason that we uh, got Lab in the Lorry into Flatgate was because we wanted to raise the profile of science and engineering within the school bring these scientists from outside into the school and hopefully inspire some people who wouldn't otherwise think of science as a career. The school wanted to raise the aspirations of students who wouldn't usually engage with STEM or consider STEM careers. The advantage in the Lab in a Lorry project, we only have six kids for one adult, so you can actually very quickly see what's going on. You can make sure everybody gets involved. 
So whether it's differences in personality or differences in sex, it doesn't matter. You can make sure everybody has a go at something. That's right. So if you're pushing the goo in and pushing extra air in, what's going to happen? Have a look. Make it high pressure in there. The high pressure is going to have to go somewhere. Two of the experiments on board look at oil extraction and light scattering. These experiments have been designed so they can be used by, particularly by key stage three. So if you get a low ability group on, you can make it relevant to them by using examples that they know of. Um, if it's a group of boys with gel in their hair, you know, talking about the fact that petroleum products are what is keeping their spike up, that can be really useful. And the same with girls, if they come in completely covered in makeup, just mentioning that the stuff that's on their face used to be dead fish can actually cause quite a, um, quite a bit of a ripple. Wow. One of the most popular experiments is about light scattering and looks at the sun and Earth's atmosphere. If you stood on the moon, what would the colour of the sun be? What do you think? Red. Red. Green. Green. White. White. Well, the answer actually is white. On the Earth, we do sometimes see the sun being red or yellow or orange. What do we have on the Earth that's not on the moon? Atmosphere. That's exactly right. Atmosphere changes the way that we see the colour of the sun. It also gives rise to the fact that we see a blue sky or a red sky at different times of the day. Now to show that, we're going to do a demonstration. To recreate the Earth's atmosphere, they're going to use a tube of water and some disinfectant. Lights off. Right. So would you read something slightly yellow? Adding more disinfectant increases the amount of atmosphere that light has to travel through. The sunlight has to go through a lot of atmosphere to get to us. The activities that they had on the bus, they're the kind of things that we don't have in the science lab. It inspires them. It's almost like special effects to them when they see some of these science experiments. So it turned a few of them onto science to kind of people who'd be normally saying, you know, science is boring, I don't like science. So as the sun goes down, that is like the atmosphere that looks like longer and longer and longer, we see the deeper reds and oranges that we see at sunset. We don't usually do them kind of like practicals in school, mm. so then it was like a change from writing in books or doing a practical, but not with that much equipment. Nobody else is ever going to see ever again. That was our pattern. The lab in a lorry and Training 2000 work with a range of schools across the northwest, including areas where STEM careers are not always obvious, such as rural areas or in communities with high unemployment. If you rotate it, the colours change. When you turn it through 90 degrees, it goes from light to dark. Do you see that? Stereotypically, physics and engineering are things that the boys do. And so I don't think that's helping getting girls into physics and, and engineering and maths. I think slowly it's going to change, but if you go into a physics department at any university, the lecturers that you see are still old men. You know, we haven't got through to there yet. So I think it's a slow thing that's going to happen, but I think you know, we can only be positive about it. If there are more people going in, then there's going to have to be more girls, there's going to have to be more, <laughs> more of everyone, which is what we're aiming for.